Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Loving God, as we gather, O oh God, to praise and worship and to reflect upon your word, we acknowledge, O oh God, that you are God who loves us with an everlasting love. A God who loved us even before we loved you. A God who gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Even while we were yet sinners, we are the God who has given us and continues to give us your grace. As the songwriter says, I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, but this is the dearest that Jesus loves me. And so, O oh God, we, as we come, O oh God, we praise you and we honor you. We worship you, O oh God, because there is no one like you. 
There is no one who has and can touch our hearts like you do. The songwriter says we can search for all eternity and we will find that there is no one like you. So God, we confess that at times we look for love in all the wrong places. We confess there, God, that we look for the example of love and how to love in all the wrong places. And as a result, even though our world is familiar with the world, the word love, many times we really don't understand what love is. And so forgive us, O oh God, for not looking to you, a God who is love, for not accepting and receiving your love that you want to give us so much. Forgive us, O oh God, for not allowing your love to dwell in our hearts so that we can love others as you have loved us. And so, God, we thank you for this time. And may your name be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Romans chapter 8, reading verses 9 to 16. And it reads, But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
recently, I was asked the question, how can someone know that they're really saved? Or how can someone really know that they're going to heaven? One of the general responses and safe answers that we tend to give to this is that you can't really know, but only God knows. In other words, the knowledge resides with God. But I am not sure if this answer is biblical. And even before we come to the Bible, such an answer causes other reflections. So if only God knows when someone gives their life to Jesus, is it that we can never know with certainty that we are saved or reconciled with God? Is it that that person can never know if, if their sins have been really washed away and if they can really claim the promises of God? And if we can never truly be certain of that, then we can never be fully settled in our relationship with God. In fact, all it would take is someone to come and ask us, you sure you are saved? And we start wandering and doubting, or for us to experience tempt a temptation or a low point in our spiritual walk will cause us to doubt our identity as a child of God. And if we can never be certain of this, then we can never be quite certain of our destination, whether it is heaven or hell. I don't know how you feel about that, but that does not seem like the healthiest way to live. But I want to suggest, though, that while God has the final say, and God is sovereign, it does not mean that God does not want us to be certain of our salvation. In fact, the Bible reveals that God desires of us not only to be saved, but to be assured of this salvation and to grow in this salvation, which is supposed to bring even more and more certainty. This is why one of the things about salvation that the Methodist Church emphasizes is Christian assurance. As John Wesley put it, all can know that they are saved. But the question is, how? Romans 8 and verse 16 in particular is a verse that we will zero in on and it says, It is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Brothers and sisters, we may observe plainly from the text that this work of assurance is a work of the spirit of God. This is why the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. So since the Holy Spirit is the seal or the guarantor of our salvation, it is what Romans 8.16 is suggesting. It is that same Spirit that comes into our lives that works in us to assure us that we are children of God. How? By bearing witness with our spirit that we are indeed God's children. In other words, it is a joint testimony of our spirit and God's spirit that confirms to us that we are children of God. So before we, but before we delve in right into looking at the witness of our spirit and the spirit of God and what these mean, one witness that God gives us for certain is that of Scripture as an objective witness. You see, Scripture tells us that we are saved once we put our faith in Christ. And this is true regardless of how we may feel. So Romans 10.9 tells us, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In Acts chapter 16, 30 to 31, when the Philippian jail and, and the jail open, jail cell open, 
the jailer bowed before Paul and Silas and says, What must I do to be saved? And they answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. See, the truth of scripture is not subjective. It does not change regardless of how we may feel. So we can be assured that if we exercise or exercise saving faith in Christ, as scripture calls us to do, then we can be confident that we are saved. But besides the objectivity of scripture, we can have a personal and conviction and experience that we are indeed children of God that begins with the Holy Spirit witnessing to our spirit. Romans 8, 16 says again, it is that very spirit bearing witness that with our spirit that we are children of God. You see, my brothers and sisters, every believer, everyone who has exercised saving faith, put their trust in Jesus Christ, his work in, 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 in the gospel of Jesus Christ, has the spirit of God at work in them. And that spirit gives all believers a personal conviction and experience. It gives believers an extraordinary sense and assurance of God's of peace with God and, jo and the joy of the Lord. John Wesley describes it in this way. <clears throat> that witness of the spirit is an inward impression on the soul whereby the Spirit of God directly witnesses to my spirit that I am a child of God, that Jesus Christ hath loved me and given himself for me, and that all my sins are blotted out, and I and even I am reconciled with God. So my brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God does a work in us that makes us actually holy in heart it gives us confidence that there is this holiness in heart and in life before there is any consciousness from our spirit that we are actually so the spirit pours in god's love in our hearts so that we can have a certainty that god loves us and he loved us first which causes us to love God in return, which therefore is the root of all holiness. Romans 5 verse 5 tells us, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So when the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that God loves us and that he has given his Son for our sins and that the Son of God loves us and that he has washed away all of our sins by his blood, then we are able to be conscious that we love God because he first loved us. And for his sake, we love our brother and sister also. And so brothers and sisters, because of the witness of this the supernatural witness of the spirit of God to our spirit, we can now bear witness by the evidence of a consciousness of a transformation in our lives inwardly and outwardly so the, the the last thing we're looking at is the testimony or the witness of our spirit and this is made possible because of what the spirit of god or what the spirit of god has testified to our spirit and this is then evidenced by a transformation inwardly and outwardly in our lives. Say what 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says. Paul says to the church, examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. In other words, what Paul is alluding to is to evaluate one's experience what one is experiencing inwardly and outwardly with what scripture speaks to that are the marks of a child of God. 
So for example, 1 John 2, 3 tells us, Now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. 1 John 2, verse 5. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. And 1 John goes on in verse 2, verse 29, and chapter 3, verse 14, gives us different marks. So in other words, the, the child of God will be able to confirm the outward marks of a child of God in one's life as laid out by Scripture. But not only that the outward marks, but will be evidenced by an inward consciousness by the grace of God that we are indeed in line and walking in line in the image of God's Son. So if not our conscious con if not our conscience will inform us that we are or if we are not walking with God in devotion, reverence and godly fear. John Wesley says it this way you will know if your soul is alive to God if you are saved from the pain of proud wrath. And you will have the ease of a meek and quiet spirit. By the same means you cannot but receive if you love, rejoice, and delight in God. And so in summary, Wesley puts it this way in his sermon. That God hath given us to be holy of heart and holy in outward conversation. It is a consciousness of our having received in and by the spirit of adoption the tempers mentioned in the word of God as belonging to his adopted children. Even a loving heart toward God and toward all mankind, hanging with a childlike confidence on God our Father, desiring nothing but him, casting all our care upon him, and embracing every child of man with earnest, tender affection. And so, brothers and sisters, we will be able to examine in our own lives. There will be a case where we will see an evidence that all we desire is to honor God. We just, we just want to glorify God in our lives. And we will see evidence of that in our own actions. And one of the questions Wesley ends with asking, and I think it is important for us to consider, how then do we discern this assurance from our natural mind and deception from the devil? Because it is not every sign and it's not every evaluation that we, it's, it's really an authentic evaluation of the assurance of our salvation. So Wesley argues that from scripture, we can make this distinction. He says that any true child of God, even before this witness, of God's spirit and our spirit will experience repentance and conviction of sin. That from this repentance, turning away from sin and being convicted by it, there will be a radical change, behavioral change as a result of repentance. That, that the child of God will experience a joy and peace from God in their heart that will result in a continuous humbling of self and, and just want to give God all the glory. So it will not just simply be an ecstatic feeling. And one who has received the witness of the Spirit will keep God's commandments with the right motives. And so therefore the conclusion is that if you lack any of these things and say you have the witness of the Spirit, then you are deceiving yourselves. My brothers and sisters, I pray that we may be all able to honestly assess our lives and be able to truly say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Amen.
Please receive the benediction. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.